Yeah. Do it. <laughs> I'm with that, I'm with that. Okay, would you like to introduce yourself so that sure. know a bit about you? That's Absolutely, right. yeah, yeah. Uh, so my name's Larry Achampong. Uh, I'm an artist. Uh, I have a multidisciplinary practice, so that means I work across uh, forms. I, that includes film, sound and music, performance, sculpture, installation. Uh, in short, I just don't like doing one singular thing. You know, I, I, I feel there's, there's a multitude of ways to have a conversation and uh, at the heart of my practice is uh, our conversations regarding identity, its relationship with the digital age, the current age and uh, social and political issues. Do you think that uh, working together with multiple media sort of gets a more saturated message across to the viewer who is coming to one of your exhibitions? Yeah, I think yeah, I think it it allows it allows a more uh, potentially dynamic conversation to happen. Um, you know, for me, once there's no one singular medium that is perhaps more important or powerful than the other. I think there are strengths that various mediums or art, art forms have that under the right circumstances can be very effective. So that's why I think in my practice I'm quite open to, you know, seeing how that can be, you know, interpreted with different ideas and, and so on. Sure. Yeah, how um, have you sort of, so I had a look downstairs, <laughs> the way that you set up the exhibition is very interactive, how important is that to your art, sort of interaction with the audience? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, for the, for the audience to have or to have gained uh, a connection to the experience uh, of, of that environment to me is, is a big deal, you know. Um, you know, I like, I like cinematic environments. When I say that, I, I like to create, you know, set pieces, if you will, or situations that really just encapsulate or take over, uh, you know, the, the viewer's sense or, or, you know, their own perception of, of space and, and, and so on. Um, and and that's what I challenge myself with. You know, you give me a gallery space. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at what it is that I can do to really, you know, bend a viewers' perception of, of what they think they're seeing or what they might see. So is there an element of sort of not shock value? You want <laughs> people to walk into a space and be like, I don't understand what's going on yet, and I need to find out. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I think you know shock value. That that's as far as I'm concerned, shock value is too easy. You know, but to create a place where, you know, uh, ideas have to simmer or it takes time or like you say, you know, like the WTH moment, like what the hell, um, it, that, that, that is, is a more interesting premise on which, you know, to, 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 have, to create an experience, to create an environment that someone's going to take away with them, they're still going to be thinking about. That to me is, is, is an interesting prospect. So, yeah, obviously your work focuses on identity, mm -hmm. but appeals to a mass audience. Like, how have you found that in sort of discovering how to do that with your own art, sort of balancing between showing the specifics of an identity, but mm -hmm. also still appealing to a mass audience? Um, it's a good question. I mean, I guess, I guess with, with what I do or how I do, the things that I do, I try to, uh, I try to think about things that I, I would like to see that I haven't seen, or things that I'd like to hear but I haven't heard. I don't go to other gallery shows to find that out. I, I tend to take on other forms of popular culture much more. So I, I'll go to the cinema, or you know, I'm a big you know gamer. I love playing video games video games, um, you know, so taking on th those forms of popular culture, um, I think have taught me, you know, ways in which I can think about, yeah, you know, conversation that, for example, may have a very specific lived experience to particular people and give a perspective, a very, uh, a very, you know, certain type of perspective. But, you know, I'm open to how, how the multitudes of people perhaps respond to that, certainly. That, you know, the, 
I guess the, the role or the job for me as, as the artist is, is to open that up for as many people as possible to look at that or to take that on. So as a result of that, you're having loads of people having that conversation, but also sharing that, 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 those moments. Now, of course, the experiences or privileges from which people come from may, may differ, but for that moment, you're kind of sharing this space or you're sharing uh, that, that, that connection. So, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question. Do you want to just give us a bit of background about yourself and how you sort of got here to exhibit at John Hansen Gallery? Yeah, well, yeah, so, I mean, um, yeah, so, you know, I, I, I grew up in, uh, in East London, a place called Bethnal Green, uh, from a you know, lower working class background, uh, spent later point of my childhood living in uh, Dagenham in Essex with my dad. Uh, I, I did the equivalent of a foundation uh, college called, uh, it's now called Barking and Dagenham College, it was called Barking College at the time. And I did my, my first degree, BA in Mixed Media Fine Art at University of Westminster, it was between 2002 to 2005. And then went on to do a master's in, uh, in fine art sculpture, the Slade School of Fine Art between 2006 uh, 2008. So, you know, I've been making for a little, a little while now. Uh, and yeah, I've done, I've done quite a few shows, you know, over the years, uh, where that obviously connects with, with uh, John Hansard. Um, so I was approached by the team, I was approached by uh, Woodrow, uh, director here, uh, who I've known for a few years. In fact, uh, I'd shown work with him uh, by anyone in, in Limerick, in Ireland. And, um, He'd stayed in touch, in, in touch and, and asked, uh, you know, if he could have a studio visit um, and spoke about, you know, what's going on with John Hansard Gallery. I, I've known about the gallery for a while, you know, it has, it has a history in the art scene, of course. And, um, and yeah, it was, for me, it was an exciting prospect to, to be working with him again, um, to be working with the team and uh, to, to create something that, for me, it's quite ambitious, especially within a solo context. Um, you know, I haven't done anything on this kind of scale before within a solo uh, presentation. So um, it's it's been a great opportunity to have that to have this point to uh, open up. You know, debate around uh, ideas that I think are, are very poignant at this this point in time. And uh, yeah, it's going to be it'll be great to see how. You know, people respond to that uh, as. So, are you excited? What are you? Is there a sort of part of the exhibition that you're particularly excited about for people to see, and sort of one that you're kind of like, I don't have favourites, but that's my favourite, and just you know that kind of thing. <laughs> um, no, I genuinely don't have. There's, there's no thing for me that really is. I've got to say that it's the favourite. Like, you know, that. Um, I think within. Uh, when the Sky Falls exhibition, you know, obviously what's central to, I think, the, the installation is the film work, the expulsion, um, to which the other works kind of get connected to, to these conversations uh, with regard to class, race, gender, um, service work that people do, and how invisible they are to people of privilege, um, but also how important they are to um, how you know cities uh, continue to exist without without them, without us, um, places would fall apart overnight. And uh, you know, even even with you know my films, of course, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about people who are excluded from history. I'm thinking about. You know, uh, I'm thinking about black people. I'm thinking about young black people, and, and what they're ex how they might connect with these ideas that or, or conversations, uh, opinions, things that I, I I have to say that I feel uh, are important. But again, like I said, you know, uh, with the work that I make, I want as many people as possible to to look at uh, or, or to take take time or you know if it can if it if it creates a connection then then that's that can be uh that can be important you know 
how that connects with the opportunity that I had with you know uh, Art on the Underground is um, I felt that in being I, I was I, I was given the prospect of redesigning the uh, the, the round of the London Underground local and when when I was you know given that that opportunity I I almost automatically wanted to know about the history of the uh, the roundel. I wanted to know about, you know, the, the choice of colours, where that comes from. Um, I wanted to know about the the African or even Asian presence within, you know, the, uh, the London Underground from a design perspective or otherwise. And, uh, you know, I found, I found out in, in going into the archive that of course those colours they're 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 related to, to empirical colours so you know it's pretty much union jack colours you know, red white and blue um, and then in going to the uh, the archive I mean I don't think I was so surprised to to see but you know there wasn't there wasn't much recorded in 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 the form of um, again you know of, you know black presence within the uh, the, the the history of the, the underground, other than the uh, the Windrush uh, generation being invited to work on uh, building and maintaining a certain infrastructure with the uh, the underground lines. So, with that in mind, it, f it it felt it felt like a very important place to continue to work with the, the, the Pan-African flags, the Pan-African colours, you know, red relating uh, uh, blood and struggle, green relating plant life, resources, the environment, um, yellow, gold relating to prosperity and a new day, the future, and uh, black relating to its people, you know. Uh, it felt like this was a, a special opportunity, a golden opportunity to do something that, if I can be blunt about it, I don't think has has happened like this artistically in such a way uh, in, in London, you know? So, um, yeah, I, I felt, you know, there's, there's responsibility, I think, that goes with that. And, uh, and for me, gladly, it was an honour to, to, to put that in, in motion, you know, um, with the help of, uh, you know, some members of my team, uh, Wumi Alaa Sebakan and uh, Nefertiti Boshi Shandorf. Um, we, we managed to you know, make that happen and redesign the other round all. So if you were to go into the station, for example, uh, depending on where you go, there are 70 round walls within uh, Westminster Underground Station, with, where the commission is uh, based. And every single one of those logos have been um, redesigned uh, with, uh, at, well, initially eight, but the one outside was taken down after the launch day. Seven different uh, designs that again connect to the uh, Pan African flags. Yeah, we are we are a breaking point in time, uh, whether thinking about things on an environmental level, uh, on a social level, um, the work and uh, the show is very much feeding into the consequences of a lot of these problems and you know believe me when I say this like they, you can't separate issues of the, uh, the, in the environment from that of the, uh, the legacy of slavery for example it's all connected but you know but it's interesting how even that conversation just gets hijacked in a, into a, a, a white privileged one of, oh, it's time to, you know, look after the planet when you look at that whole legacy of what has, has, has come before that and is still around. Um, and that isn't, isn't, isn't located, you know, even the likes, I'm sorry, but of, uh, you know, Extinction Rebellion. It's, you know, it's right, we're protesting for the environment, but, but, but on who's, who, who's, who gets to say that? And who actually gets to walk away unscathed after you know standing or gluing themselves to a, a plane? If that's a black person, like I want to, I want to see what happens to them. No, actually, I don't want to see what happens to them because I know what's going to happen, right? So, so yeah, I think uh, you know the, the 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 show is it's not shying away from 
from any of that. I don't think, you know, I don't think it's overly literal in that sense, but you kind of read between the lines. There are a lot of, a lot of connecting uh, themes that, 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 uh, amount, that amount to this, this moment of, uh, of, of mass, I'd say, collective, you know, hysteria. More of me. Okay, so you can look online at um, larryachampong.co.uk. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram. Uh, type in Larry at Champong. Um, yeah, th those those two things, or check out uh, the gallery that represent me, Copperfield. Uh, just look up Copperfield London on Instagram, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add or include? Uh, just massive thanks to the uh, the John Hansard Gallery team, really, and and, and to my team, uh, Nefertiti Boshi Shandorf especially, and uh, to to Woodrow Nadia. Uh, Jack, Lynn, um, and, and, and everybody else.